Hello and welcome everybody. Al Berg here with the Doggy Style Podcast, episode 35. It's June 4th, 2018. I'm walking down 6th Avenue right now. And today, I'm a little nervous at what I did. I finally decided to not help the competition. So I've been talking about this. If you've been listening to my my podcast, um, you know that recently and in the past, I've helped others on my team. And I find that this is back backfires on me because I'm rated against these people. So helping them means I'm lowering my rating or giving myself a better chance of getting a lower rating. So I've decided to not help help these people I'm competing against. And I'm a little nervous about it. So today, a coworker texted me, could you, uh, could we set up some time to go over some software called SSRS? I gave a demo, a brief demo today. And uh, he wanted to see how I did things. So he asked if we could set up time next week or this week for a demo or show him how to do it. And I was like, I told him it was very easy. I got it all off Google. You can do it easily. Just use Google. So, which isn't really true. I mean, the truth is I did figure it out myself and I don't want to make it easy for this guy. Let him figure it out too. Um, I spent a lot of time and developed a lot of skills in figuring things out. And the question is, why should I give my competition my intellectual property? So it's something to think about. Now, am I doing the right thing for the company? Probably not. So a couple of things today also pissed me off a little bit. So we hired a new person. Today was his first day. And they hired a person. I was I usually interview people, and I didn't get to interview this guy. I certainly wouldn't have um, selected him. Very poor skills, but because there's a budget, um, because the budget or whatever the 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 requisition for him was going to disappear, they just hired him. Now he seems like a nice guy, and in fact, he may be a great candidate to help. And I've always said that having having uh, low quality people low quality I don't mean low quality I mean uh, lower I, I don't mean low quality I mean people who are not as skilled as others can can be useful because then they could do some of the grunt work so I have said that yeah so um it's just one of those things. I'm a little nervous. Uh, what am I going to do if my boss says, oh, you're going to have to uh, show us how to do this? And right now, I'm not going to. I'm going to just use, well, it's very easy to do. It's on Google. I got it off of there. You can get it off there, too, just like I did. And the truth is, I did use my skills. I used my, I'll call it hacking skills, and I'm running right now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, just almost tripped. Whew. As I cross on 34th Street. So my plan today is to walk down 6th Avenue, which is a... Um, 6th Avenue is a uptown street. I'm walking downtown and then come up uh, the High Line. Now, I don't know if I could do that because it's very hard to make the lights. Um, I actually have a nice view of the um, Freedom Tower right now. Yeah, so... So I spent time um, enhancing my software at work, and one of the things we have, two types of checklists. We have what's called a short checklist and a long checklist. And my software always sent out, so I have software that can send out emails with a completed checklist. I mean, I do check the items that I'm sending out, but instead of me typing in my initials in the whole checklist, I have 
I send out the checklist through um, an automated process. And in the past, it was just doing the short checklist. So today I modified it. Um, and it's pretty cool what I did. So I don't have to remember which checklist to send out. It's based on the date. And if the date, so I put in a bunch of dates into a spreadsheet. And if today's date is greater than that date in the spreadsheet, it will send out the long checklist and then update it a year from that date. So a year from now, we'll be able to also do the other thing. Sorry. Yeah, so this is pretty crowded here. Um, and I don't know if it's a good idea because I have a 601 train to make. Not sure if I'll be able to make it. Yeah, so this weekend, I uh, went through two boxes, a lot of books, a lot of papers, and I do need to find a better way. Um, it, it just seems like a waste of time. Maybe I should not write down any notes uh, for a week and see how it goes. I'm always writing down notes and then I have to go through the notes and organize it somewhere. I, maybe based on how good the idea is. So I'll say if I have a very good idea, I could uh, I could write it down. So maybe based on the quality of the idea, not just an average idea. In that way, it'll help me do more important things or track more important things. So today I'm going to do my uh, key principles for a success book. I'll do the random thing I usually do. What I usually do is I have a list of 1300 principles. I uh, shuffle it and then I just go through and talk about some of the principles I have listed uh, all while walking. So if I ever sound a little breathy, it's because I'm either running or walking fast. Uh, so yeah, so this weekend I went through a couple of boxes. I organized my books. Matter of fact, if you want to see the books I have, you can go to http colon slash slash t to do the letter t the number two do dot com slash books and up will come a list of all the books I have and where they're located. <laughs> so if you ever want to rob me and, f and steal a book, you can find it very easily. Um, one thing I was supposed to do with this list is I can use the list to make sure I don't buy a book I already have and I must have now 20 books that are duplicates. So I see a book, I like it, I don't read it, I stick it on a bookshelf and then I wind up buying it again. Uh, not, not a great thing to do. Much better to just buy things you are going to read. So that's another issue I have and this is a big issue of mine. What I call the too many. So. I have a lot of books, too, very, way too many, not enough to read, and I, I don't really read any of them in a way. Uh, like right now, there's not a book I'm reading that I would say, oh, I'm going through this book, and there's a few books, I guess. Another thing I need to work on is prioritization, so, and I was thinking of some prioritization exercises where I just take out five items and prioritize them or go through a to-do list and see if I could prioritize those items. Oops, sorry. Uh, I'm just, uh, somebody stopped short in front of me and I bumped into them. Okay, so I'm gonna go through, as I say, I always go through my yellow list, my yellow note, notepad, see what's on there. Okay, so one of the things I thought today was we had a meeting today, uh, a group meeting. They introduced a new guy. Again, seemed like a nice guy, but just seemed very low in skills. So one of the things I'm thinking is that at meetings, you should only be positive, happy, 
avoid complaining about stuff. Nobody likes a complainer. And uh, I'm going to say a meeting is not the place to complain. Um, don't criticize. And I know don't, don't blame people. So if there's a problem, don't say this person didn't do this. They seem to not like that. I guess they want to blame, blame me. So a lot of time was taken up today because uh, my, one of my coworkers, he kept chatting with me and he was telling me about poker, how he played poker. And then he told me a funny story. I thought, not a funny story, how he asked me what kind of phone I had. And it turns out he does something. I don't know. He makes a profit for getting people uh, signing up with Sprint. And I've always suspected him of having another job. So I don't know if this is what I suspected, but it wouldn't surprise me if he had a lot of other things. Also found out that his house was uh, $750,000 in New Jersey. So a lot of money. So he's doing something right. Um, but I guess he has a huge, huge mortgage. Um, so anything else? So I, I had a report that was due today. I got it out. I fixed the software. I, I did a, my review. I have to review the reports. And so that went pretty well. It's just really crowded today. Um, in New York, I keep bumping into people. Yeah, so I don't know how to remember that, but it would be great if right before meetings, I got a reminder or maybe during meetings, don't complain, uh, don't criticize, just be agreeable. I always thought these meetings were for to voice your concerns, but I think they're not. The real purpose is uh, a persuasion, is to persuade the person uh, to do things you want to do. So you can persuade people by, number one, having them like you. I said a few things at the meeting about um, language and to the new guy, because one thing when you start a new job, it's really a completely different language. That'll take a while. I don't know if the boss wanted me to say that. Um, could have pissed him off. Who knows? He, he does seem to anger easily, but he's a lot better in person. So when we have these meetings, um, he acts a lot better than when I feel like he uses email. I think he's not a good emailer. Yeah, so, um, and just again, uh, that whole thing about telling my coworker to go use Google, I, I don't feel good about it. I really don't. I, I kind of don't like this guy, um, the one that asked me. I mean, he's a nice guy. Uh, something about him that I don't like. I'm not sure what it is. He talks in a confident way, and he's... Doesn't seem that very good. Like, I don't think he could figure it out, figure this stuff out, but if he can, good for him. Um, I tried to train him in VBA, but he was not able to learn it. Uh, we went, you know, maybe he's just not a programmer. The tool we're learning is not really programming, so maybe he'll have an easier time with that as I'm crossing uh, 23rd Street right now. getting out of the sun. One thing, and maybe it's self-evident, if you walk in the summer, you should always walk on the shady side of the street. It's usually a shady side. Um, a, a movie that I'm going to watch, or I was told to watch, with, I think his name is John Malkovich. It's called Good Goodwill Hunting. And, uh, so today, one of the, my new techniques I'm trying to do is not get angry, uh, let little things bounce off of me, and I've been just counting them. And 
not sure it's a good idea. Maybe it's better to just forget about them than to write them down. But there were nine things that I wrote down, and I'll just quickly go over them. So waiting for this, the train, and this is a a place where uh, I'm, a, I'm a hypocrite because some guy jumped while we were waiting for the train to come into the station. Some guy kind of jumped in front of me, and I've, I probably have done that. So he did that, and then he got his own seat, which could have been my seat. So that took me off a little bit. Then uh, I sat with some other guy, and I felt like his knee was a little on my space, but he was skinny. It, was, does, it wasn't that bad. Um, then my Chrome browser didn't scroll. Uh, Edge was slow to load. That was four. Then a coworker, I don't know what she does, but she's always using tape. Almost like she has another business where she delivers packages or something. But I just keep hearing her pulling tape out, ripping tape, and taping stuff up. Um, then a coworker was a little nasty with me today. Uh, this is a guy I work with. Uh, he's a nice guy, but he has, he's like, he gets into these moods which I hope I never do, and I hope you don't do either, which is, you're angry about something, don't take it out on somebody else. I mean, really. Just because you're angry doesn't mean you have to, like, be unfriendly to somebody. So, anyway, he seemed to lighten up a little bit. I think he's under a lot of stress, and I could see why. He's got a pretty bad boss. Uh, kind of ruthless woman who, and again, there are men bosses like this too, who cannot say a positive, doesn't seem to ever, ever say a positive thing about, about these guys. Um, I just don't like her. I know I've smiled at her, tried to say hello and totally ignores me. So what are you, what are you going to do? Uh, not everybody's nice in the world. And that's one thing I'm realizing. Not everything is the way you want it to be. So it, it does pay to accept that, that, um, that things just aren't always the way you want them to go. Uh, people don't act the way you want them to act. People don't listen. Your situation could get bad, whether you get fired from a job or illness or something like that. And a lot of these things are out of our control. Now, one thing you think, you have to look at what you can control. And one thing you can control is if you're gonna get fired from a job, you can control the skills you have, you can control how much time you spend working on your skills, you can control looking for a job and keeping up. So I think that was a little disturbing is that when they've been hiring people, they've only been looking in another state, a much cheaper, a southern state to hire people so it almost seems like they're not hiring in New York and I mean I might find this happens with all the companies that they're just not hiring people in New York but I won't know unless I look and there's also could be a lot of people that are being hired in New York which reminds me of my parking spot analogy and that is if you come into New York City and you uh, don't think you're going to get a parking spot. You won't. But if you come into New York City and you believe you will, you will. So it's a job is the same thing. If you don't think you can get a job, it makes it really hard to get one. But if you believe there's jobs out there and keep trying, you'll get one. So some software I was using wasn't working, was number eight. And then there's a, a managing director of my company. His secretary was very loud on the phone, talking about who knows what, uh, just personal stuff. And that annoyed me a little bit. So all in all, all these little things were, were not a big deal. I mean, they really weren't in the scheme of things. I mean, uh, I mean, I do have a good paying job, have a beautiful family, and uh, I live in the greatest city on earth, so.
I don't live in it, but I'm walking in it right now. Um, um, just another thing I had on my list is to do more push-ups and sit-ups. And it could be, it could be at home. Okay. Let's just stay here. Know what this is? Yeah, let's do it. Somebody dropped a piece of paper. It was just a receipt of stuff. Yeah. So d to do push-ups and more push-ups and sit-ups, and uh, to make it into a habit. It could be during TV commercials. It could be during my stand-up alarm, which uh, rings every 10 minutes. So just an idea. Um, and just another thing is to do more, more planning. So that's, that's about it for today, uh, my yellow list, and I'll go through my, my book, which is called Key Principles for Success. Okay, so I just had a, little, a phone call with uh, my son. He's doing well, and I'm on the high line now. So, a little heavy breathing walking upstairs. And uh, I was going to, wait, I was going to um, go through my book, Key Principles for Success. So if you wanna see what I'm looking at, you can go to kp4s.com. That's K P as in Peter, as in principal. For the number four S is in success. dot com. Four four characters. Okay, so um, one thing that I found is. I've started recording calls at work. So if I have a meeting or a call with somebody, I'll try and record it. And I kind of felt it was a superpower. Lately, it's not as important. But when I first started, a lot of times I would not pick up. It would be just too complicated what the person was talking about. Or my boss had a bad accent at the time. And uh, it was just hard to... to get what she was saying so but now but but once I started recording the calls it was like a superpower I'm gonna say because I relaxed a lot because I was I would get a little nervous that I wasn't understanding her and and it was a new job so I think it was really helpful so if you do have um, you do have somebody who's not explaining themselves well and you have a way to record the meetings or calls, I would say it's a good idea to do it. Um, and even better is that there is software you can use and some companies allow it, my company does, that you can record not only the, the voice, but you rec can record the screen interaction. So if somebody's showing you something, uh, and I really do think that's a superpower because somebody's showing you something, you don't have to ask a lot of questions. They show you, you record it, and then from that, you know exactly what they showed you, and you could repeat it, and you could do it again. You could play it in slow motion. So it was a lot of very positive things I felt like I got out from it. Um, and again, everybody's situation is different, and you, you know there there could be some danger to doing it. Like if you're not supposed to do it, you could get in trouble for doing it. So. But from my point of view, it was very powerful, a very powerful technique. Um, 
So think about if you want to use it, but uh, do know there's some downside to it. And one other thing is that sometimes it's hard to listen to the calls again. You know, you don't have time. It's, it might be better to take notes. And even sometimes you think you're recording the call and you're not. And so, you know, what do you do there? You were given instructions and you didn't take notes. So you, all, you do have to take notes even though you're recording the call. Uh, I say it's very important. Okay, the next one I, is from Seth Godin, who's a pretty good author. If you haven't read anything by him, I could recommend him. We just actually got a book from him. I don't remember the title, uh, but we could look it up on. Let me look it up. So if I go to. So I go to t, to do.com slash books. I should be able to find his book. And I'm just scrolling down this very long list. And it was called, what was it called? Um, still looking. Okay, it's called All Marketers Tell Stories. I haven't read it, but I have a number of books by him. And I would recommend him as a pretty good author. He's also got a blog you could follow. Seth Godin, S-E-T-H-G-O-D-I-N. Okay, so... The one that I have is called Build Your Tribe. Uh, seek out people who you want to be part of. It's kind of an interesting concept. Um, so I need to figure out, I, I'm kind of a tribe of people who want to be successful. Uh, anybody who wants to be successful, has ideas for success, I do like that. And so I would say that's my tribe also have a tribe of people who are Excel VBA programmers. So anybody who has that skill would be part of my tribe. Next one I have here is uh, my current goals for 2018. I have 24 items here. So, so the first one I have is write some software to help reach goals. And I've worked on that. Um, part of my success alarm has a whole goals uh, system. And it needs work. It's not, not there yet. Uh, <laughs> the second one is reach my goals, which that's kind of self-evident. Um, the third one is improve my appearance. So I want to find ways to look younger. I'm 58 years old and uh, feel old. And so I want to have a more youthful appearance. And one way to do that is to be thinner, not have a, a pot belly, which I'm working on through a diet. Um, could be other things I can improve on. Uh, next one I have is improve my memory. Uh, so I, I've had a lot of books on memory and how to improve your memory, but I really never worked on it. So I don't know how much I'm going to do with that, but it would be nice to have a better memory. I mean, ideally, if you had a photographic memory. And so I'm going to work on some of the skills to improve your memory. Hard thing is to find the time, even to remember to do it. Um, next one is more energy. So I got to find ways to have more energy. And I think I'm pretty convinced that a lot of energy has to do with excitement. So if you're not excited, doing exciting things, you're going to be bored. And if you're bored, you're going to have low energy. So at work, if you have a exciting job or if you're doing new things, then, uh, time goes fast and you'll have energy. 
and, and there's a lot of little things that I would like to do. Little household chores. And this is related to um, Jordan Peterson, which he says, if you can't get the little things done, how can you do the big things? So there's a lot of little things I have listed. Basically, finish house chores, and then I have some other ones. Uh, another goal is to weigh less than 165. I'm about seven pounds away from that right now. And in theory, it should take seven weeks because I'm trying to lose a pound a week. So seven weeks from now, we'll see if I'm, uh, I'm down there. Uh, I have a leaky force faucet. My bathroom is looks terrible. There's wood under my deck that needs work. Um, we have some leaky pipes. I mean, it's just all these little things. I also would like to declutter, and one of the things to declutter is my garage. Now, if you have, uh, you should have a goal, a list of goals for the year. And I do need a better way to look at this and to look at what my goals are and to, to ask myself almost every day, what have I done on this list? Um, next one is work out three times a week. Then I want to get my blood sugar less than 100, which is, uh, a goal of mine. Um, improve health, less boring work, EE at work, look for a new job, my own business, printed book, more friends and more fun. So that's just a just general list of things to accomplish in 2018. Next key principle is called have a partner. So very few people are successful on their own, if any. I mean, you could even think of almost all the very successful people like Apple, Microsoft, Google. There were two people. And it's usually a technologist and a marketer, um, usually. But um, it's important. It seems like without a partner, uh, with that same desire and goal you have, it's hard to reach success. Not impossible, of course, just hard. Excuse me, sorry. Oh, sorry. Just had a. Somebody's like taking up the whole walkway and I like bump into them to say I was sorry. So I don't have much more on that one. Uh, the next one is problems are opportunities. So if you have a problem, you want to look at it as an op opportunity. In other words, in a lot of cases, there might be right in that problem, a problem that other people have and a business, mo a business you can start based on the problem. So try to look at problems, uh, not necessarily, or a book you can write on how to solve the problem. Uh, look at problems as opportunities and I don't really have more on that one. This is just a general one that when I was a kid, the rule is don't lend out stuff you want back. So when I was a kid, you know, maybe this happened twice to me or three, two, three times in a row where somebody in my family didn't have their keys. So they borrowed keys from me and um, I would come home and not have my keys with me and be stuck outside. And from that, from that experience, and I think it might've happened, two days in a row or maybe two days in one week or twice in two weeks. And from that one experience or two experiences, I've made a rule to not lend out stuff 
well, the, the lend out stuff you want back has to do with books. So sometimes people will want to borrow a book from you. Oh, can I borrow the book? When you lend a book, you're not getting it back. So there's a lot of stuff that if you lend to people, you're not, never going to see again. So don't lend things to people with the idea that you're going to get it back. Lend it to them with the ideas you're giving it to them. And that way you won't have that problem. So I don't think money is a good idea to lend to people. And if you want to avoid it, you can say something like, I have a rule. I don't lend money to people. I'd love to ask, on, I'm going to try to ask on Twitter, have you ever lent people money and to see how many people have gotten it back or should you do it? Uh, so the next one I have is, It's um, lowercase s, h, and uppercase b, c. So it, and it means small habit, big change. And uh, it's just something to look at. What habit, what small little habit can you create or get rid of that will make a big change in your life? And this is kind of similar to small change, I have another one, SCBR, small change, big return. Or the 80-20 rule is very similar, or the uh, butterfly effect. Uh, the butterfly effect is this hypothetical theory that if a butterfly flaps its wings, it can cause a tornado in China or something, or flaps its wings in America. And so that's just a, it has to do with chaos theory and small, and again, showing you small little things can create big changes. So don't underestimate that where you do do something that's small and get a very big return from it. As I'm running across the street. Um, I have 12 minutes to get to Penn Station, maybe 13. Should be doing okay. I didn't stop to take any pictures. I'm off the High Line now. I'm on 30th Street. I like this one. This is a nice rule to think about. Spend some time. People say meditating, thinking about little things I can do. What little things can you do? So focus on these little, little changes and then see if it has this butterfly effect. Or I like to t think about that where you drop a ball or like a roulette wheel where you, they spin a ball and it's always going to a different socket or a different number based on a very small change that was made. Um, also, there's a another device where you drop a ball and it hits pegs, and as it hits pegs, it's kind of random of where it goes. So, okay, I'm going to just spend some time right now thinking of some small changes I can do. Um, well, one small thing, and this is something I've done, is with dieting is a good is a good. Uh, example. So if you can make a small change in what you eat. So for example, if you put milk in your coffee, don't put milk in your coffee. That one small change may help you lose weight or keep weight. Matter of fact, an example of how small changes, if, if you have 10 more calories per day, which is obviously less than the milk you're going to put in, at the end of a year, you would have gained one pound. At the end of 30 years, you'll be up 30 pounds. And that's just, you know, that doesn't mean 
specifically, but just as an example of how over time a small change can make a very big difference. So in terms of my diet, what I do is I weigh myself every day. I try to stay on a trend. I try to adjust and I try to make small changes to what I eat. And in theory, just making these small changes will help me eventually lose the weight I want to lose. Uh, across the street, it's going to be hard. Um, what else could I do? So one small change I do with the diet also is I, if I'm behind my goal, I try to walk at least an hour, an hour extra. Um, could be I can also go to the gym that day. All sorts of ways you can use this. Let's see if I can think of any others. Um, a small change could be to get in a little earlier at work or leave a little earlier each day. And that small change could possibly give you more success than you want. Um, Another small change could be to study a topic each day or every hour. Um, set an alarm for every hour. You can get it. I have a nice alarm at uh, successalarm.com where you can have an alarm every hour to stand up or you could use it for anything. I mean, you could use it to do push-ups. You do a little push-ups every day. I mean, what would happen if every day I try to do one more push-up. Start with one, then two, then three. So 365 days, I'll be doing 365 push-ups in theory. There's another example of something small. Um, now, in terms of a goal, probably the best thing you could do is, is uh, get started on something. So if my goal is to write a book, I need to write, right? I need to write a little and I could write five minutes each day. So it's a small amount and then I can try to increase it by a minute every day. Or I can try to write a page a day. Just little things, these little small things can give you big results. So think about what you can do. Uh, a small little thing you can do that can get you some big results. What habits also? What habits do you currently have that you need to break? So is your habit eating junk food? Is your habit uh, watching TV? Is your habit goofing off at work and playing video games? What is it? What's that little thing, that little habit, that one habit you can break and success can be yours? Um, the next one I have is what worries me or my subconscious. So worry is a motion of, as of thinking about the future, some future event likely that won't happen. But uh, one thing you can do is it could also help you prepare for the future. So if you're worried about something, so for example, uh, am I worried about losing a job? I could get my resume in order. Um, uh, some things you can't really change though, so it doesn't, doesn't pay to be worried. But just that gut feeling is, could be your subconscious picking up things and so don't ignore worry. I mean, some people will say, don't worry, but it's, it's a message. Your subconscious probably is picking something up and uh, you can see how good it is. I mean, is, is your worry a good indicator of what's going to happen or is it usually wrong? Does it usually cause you stress and anxiety? Um, the next one I have is the 80-20 rule, which, which is a I'm sure, sure you all know, but if you don't, there was a guy named Pareto who was a economist and he found that 
twenty percent of the people had eighty percent of the profits. And this ratio is very common, 80-20. So 20% of the problems you have will waste 80% of your time. 20% um, of the people do 80% of the work. You wear 20% of your clothing 80% of the time. So it just goes on, very popular um, ratio. And it basically, tells you that to focus on things that are important so that one-fifth so it's really one-fifth of everything um, so one-fifth is 20 percent and and, and an easy way to come up with this to come to 2080 I'm gonna get you down to 2575 is you take what you're trying to do say you have ten things Pick out the top five things to do. And now it'll get you to 50%. Um, then after that, and then after that, if you split that in half, you get down to 25%. So you'll have two or three items. Anyway, I'm gonna shut this down now. Hope you all have a great, great day. It's Al Burke signing off.